of course, I know you, but uh, I think for the viewers, if you yourself, introduce yourself, please, in short. I am uh, Peter Galbraith. Uh, I'm a former American diplomat who served as the first U.S. ambassador to Croatia, but uh, I have also had uh, a long involvement on the Kurdish issue going back to the 1980s when I led a mission that documented Saddam Hussein's use of chemical weapons against the Kurds, got the U.S. Senate to pass comprehensive sanctions on Iraq, was it with uh, uh, Jalal Talabani during the uprising in 1991, and uh, continued to be involved, uh, including uh, helping uh, uh, President Barzani in the negotiations for the uh, rights of Kurdistan and the Iraqi constitution in 2005. Uh, you have written a book about the disintegration of Iraq, and yesterday in your contribution, also you uh, concentrated on the, you said that uh, practically there is no Iraqi state any longer. This is any, is there any, is this a statement or this is based on a, a practical analysis of the situation right now? Well, the book I wrote in 2006 argued, uh, it was called The End of Iraq. Yeah and it argued that Iraq had broken apart, uh, that it could not be put, together, put back together. And the reason simply was that 20% uh, of Iraq's population are, uh, live in the Kurdistan region. They unanimously want to be independent. Uh, they have a, sep a, a government that is in all regards, except international recognition, like an independent state. And in the case of the Sunnis and Shiites, I argued in 2006 that the problem was that they didn't share uh, a, a common view of what Iraq should be. They didn't share a common Iraqi identity. The Shiites, who were the majority, came to power through democratic elections, uh, seek to define Iraq as a Shiite state. Their closest ally is Iran, uh, and that's unacceptable to the Sunnis. And I think 10 years later, as we look back, uh, the, obviously exactly those divisions are there. Uh, the uh, Kurdistan continues to be like an independent state. It has even a separate policy from Iraq, uh, foreign policy. Uh, President Barzani has announced that there will be a referendum. The Kurdistan parliament has set up a commission to conduct the referendum. They haven't yet set the date, but this will come. And uh, so there will be an independent referendum on independence. And in the case of the uh, Sunnis and Shiites, you know, what happened in the, with the Islamic State, with Daesh, this wasn't uh, because uh, Maliki was a sectarian. Uh, it was that from the very beginning, the Sunnis did not accept that the Shiites should rule Iraq. The insurgency began. Uh, and... Um, uh, and, and from Maliki's point of view, then, what was the Iraqi army for? Not to defend against Iran, who were their best friends, not to defend against America, who were friends, but to defend against the Sunnis. So the idea that you would bring the enemy into your army didn't make sense. And, and you know, he was right in one way. The Sunnis in Mosul in 2014, the Sunni officers, yeah. they, they were in touch with Daesh. Uh, obviously, uh, if uh, such development uh, will be uh, realized in, let's say, uh, during the uh, during this year or next year, it uh, depends a little also about the regional powers. For instance, you have Iran, you have uh, Turkey in the area concerning the situation in Iraqi Kurdistan, because they are also involved in somehow. What do you think their reaction would, would be vis-a-vis, uh, uh, -vis, let's say, an independent Kurdish entity inside Iraq? Uh, well, Turkey uh, is the country that has, more than any other, made possible uh, the independence of Kurdistan. Uh, Turkey is the major source of foreign direct investment in Iraqi Kurdistan. But more importantly, Kurdi Turkey has constructed a pipeline that now enables Iraqi Kurdistan to export, I think today it's about 660,000 barrels a day. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, Kurdistan now can export enough of its own oil that it doesn't need a share of Iraqi oil, which anyhow it's not getting paid. So Turkey has made the economic independence possible. Turkey's position on the political independence, uh, basically if you hear what Turkish politicians say, including the spokesman for Erdogan's own party, they've, they've said that um, 
uh, you know, that, that uh, uh, the Kurds have a right of, of self-determination, uh, that, you know, they hope for the unity of Iraq, but they understand the right for self-determination. Uh, even uh, Kanan Evron, before he died a few years ago, he, he said, well, of course Kurdistan's going to be independent. Yeah, but the question is, uh, if, uh, for instance, they say the Kurds have the right of self-determination, how the treatment of the Kurds inside Turkey could be justified in this way? Well, again, there, here we're talking about the Kurdistan in Iraq, yeah. region and the former Iraq, uh, which also Turkey sees, uh, it's, it's really, it's its best neighbor, yeah. uh, has bad relations with all the rest of its neighbors, but good relations with the Kurdistan region. It sees it as a way, an extension of Turkey's influence, so a strategic asset, uh, a bulwark against an Iranian-dominated Shiite Iraq. Um, the si domestic situation in, in Turkey um, is, is something from the point of view of the Turkish government, uh, and I, actually I would say objectively, it is a different situation. Mm -hmm. um, different in what way? Well, again, from the point of view of the Turkish government, it's uh, within Turkey. Uh, even from the point of view of the, um, of the, of the Turkish Kurds, both the HDP and the PKK, they, they're not for independence. Uh, therefore, uh, recognition of Kurdish rights uh, and uh, element of uh, local self-government as well as uh, into the war and amnesty. So the, the Kurds in Turkey are not wishing to leave Turkey. And so that's, a, that's also an important point. But uh, this question has not been tested really. I mean, uh, there has not been any opportunity for the Kurds in Turkey that democratically to say what they want, for instance. Well, they, they've voted uh, in democratic elections uh, for the HDP, uh, which, you know, is an expression of presumably what they would like to accomplish. Uh, do you think uh, that uh, the democratization of Kurdish question, I mean, the, it, the concept is called Turkification of Kurdish issue, will be helpful for advancing the Kurdish question in those countries? I don't know what, what is the term Turkification. Turkification in this sense that, for instance, uh, a political party like uh, HDP will not just uh, have its activity in the framework of uh, Kurdistan region in Turkey, but for the whole Turkey, I mean. Well, I, I think that's, that's true because um, uh, first the Kurds uh, have migrated out of the southeast, so of course, we know the largest Kurdish city in the world is Istanbul. Um, and secondly, the HDP, while it's primarily a Kurdish party, uh, um, it, it got the votes of a lot of liberal Turkish friends, uh, Turkish voters. Uh, most of my friends who are Turks, that is not Kurds, also voted for the HDP. Yeah. Now, coming to the Rojava, to the Syrian Kurdistan, I, I think you have been visiting the area three times in the past, uh, recent uh, times. So uh, first, what was your impression about it and uh, what's your background knowledge about the Rojava? Well, I've been three times in, in the last uh, 13 months, uh, and, and, but I'd also been there um, in the, well, in, in 91 and 2002. So I'd, um, the, um, and I'd, I'd, you know, met with the Syrian Kurds before this, the, you know, uh, uh, before the, even the, the current war. Um, the, um, you know, I, when, I, when I go to, went to Rojava, uh, the various trips, it reminds me a lot of being in Iraqi Kurdistan in 1991, yeah. you know, during the uprising and then immediately afterwards. There's a lot of revolutionary excitement, uh, lots of political activity, flags, uh, and, um, you know, and people have a sense that they're building a society. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Um, I think that the, uh, uh, you know, it's orderly. Um, the, you know, the ch people at the checkpoints are polite. They're, they're, you know, security's not perfect, but they've set up some pretty decent security. Basic services are there. Uh, they've, they've produced some new school books um, in, in the Kurdish language rather than Arabic uh, using the Latin script. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of, uh, of positive developments. Uh, of course, the, as the fighters, these are the most effective fighters, the YPG and the YPJ. Uh, they've taken a lot of um, casualties, more than 3,000 uh, 
uh, dead. Uh, so it's been it's been very heroic, and the defense of Kobani was uh, was extremely heroic. Um, you know, it, it, of course, there, it's not perfect. Uh, there are some human rights questions, mm -hmm. and uh, that clearly, you know, the other political parties there don't feel free to engage in political activity um, to the extent that they would like to. So um, there, there are some things that, that need to change. One, of course, one of the other very positive developments there, though, I should say, is uh, the equal rights for women, the fact that the legislatures have equal number of women, they're women co-prime ministers. Uh, 